DNA would be great if each relationship had a specific amount of DNA involved. But it doesn't. And so genetic genealogy can be tricky sometimes. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics and this is a segment of DNA. Now, we share DNA with a lot of people, which is great because then we can use it as a tool to match with them through genealogy. The more DNA we share with people, the closer our relationship is. For instance, we share half of our DNA with each one of our parents. That's because our parents gave us one set of chromosomes each. So we share about 3400 CM with each parent. Now for this relationship, there's not really a range of sharing because it is one set of chromosomes. So if one set of chromosomes is defined as 3400 CM, then we share 3400 CM with each parent. All relationships aren't so clean cut. Now with siblings, we also share about 50% of our DNA but we share different parts of that DNA with each sibling because we all inherited different DNA from our parents. On average, we share about 2,550 centimorgans of DNA with each one of our siblings, but we don't necessarily share exactly that amount. Because of recombination and because of how that DNA has been passed on to us, there's a range that we share, somewhere between about 2,000 centimorgans and 3,000 centimorgans. So you may be more closely related genetically to one sibling than another sibling just because you share more DNA with that sibling. The nice thing though is there's no real overlap for the range that siblings share. There's a tiny bit at the lower end that shares with our next group and that is the 25% group. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. The 25% group includes grandparents, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews, and half siblings. We share 25% of our DNA with each one of these groups. On average, it's about 1,700 centimorgans, but it really is a range from about 1,300 centimorgans to 2,100 centimorgans. So if you were on the upper end of this range, it could actually look like you were on the lower end of a sibling range. Now that doesn't happen very often, but it is possible. Now the good news is, is this is really the only overlap in this. So if you're within that 25% group, you know that you're one of those relationships, as long as you're not related in multiple ways to the same person. The next group is the 12.5% group at 850 centimorgans. This includes great grandparents, great grandchildren, great aunts and uncles, great nieces and nephews, and half aunts and uncles, and half nieces and nephews. Oh yeah, and first cousins. So you can see each group, the number of relationships that it could be is increasing, and it's increasing really exponentially because of all the different possible combinations that share the same amount of DNA. Now, while this group on average shares 850 centimorgans, the range is between about 500 centimorgans and 1250 centimorgans. If you remember with the 25% group, the bottom part of their range was at about 1300 centimorgans. So there's not really any overlap between the 12.5% and the 25% group, but there's a lot of overlap between the 12.5% group and the 6% group. So the 6% group starts to get worse because now we have overlaps on both the high end and the low end, and those overlaps start to increase. The 6% group should share on average about 425 centimorgans. Now we already talked about the 12.5% group, which the range goes down to 500. So almost half of the 6% group is shared with the 12.5% group. While this may be first cousins once removed and other things like that, and several different half relationships, because of the overlap, depending on where you fall in that range, you could also be looking at relationships that are in the 12.5% group or relationships that are in the 3% group. Now the 3% group is just as bad as the 6% group, albeit there's actually more relationships in that than in the 6% group, but it really gets tough once you get to the 1.5% group. The 1.5% group has a unique problem in that all of your relatives that should fall into this group 
don't necessarily share DNA with you. So the ranges for the 1.5% group and below start at zero DNA, and then they go up from there. And there's a lot of overlap. And so that's why when we're starting to look at third and fourth and fifth or sixth cousins, they could be something a little bit different. And because of the different types of relationships of how many generations removed, whether they're half relationships, whether they're double relationships, trying to figure out a relationship on the one and a half percent group and below without any other information than somebody's DNA is next to impossible. Now, if the majority of people who had ever lived had their DNA tested, we'd actually be able to work out the relationships of almost everybody. Unfortunately, DNA testing didn't start up until the 21st century. And by that time, 90% of the humans who have ever lived have already died and their DNA is lost. But with records and other genealogical tools, we can unravel where a lot of these overlap relationships are. And we can determine just from a little bit of DNA how many of our relatives are related to us. If you have any questions about how DNA relationships overlap, put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer it for you. I've also included a link to a chart that shows how different groups of relationships overlap. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that it can reach more viewers.